Welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Freed coming to you live from Boca. That's right. I'm in the Southern Feather Nation studios. We are over Zoom. Uh, I want to thank you for being a listener to this podcast. I want to thank you for being involved. If you're, uh, I, and, and let me, uh, we just taped the special. If you were there, thank you. If you send good vibes, thank you. I, I want to thank the audience, just anyone who gets involved with my stuff. It means a lot. The support. I can't get over it. I'm almost embarrassed by it. Like, it, it's just, and I mean that. It's just wild. So the shows were great. If you want to hear behind the scenes stuff, um, I did a whole recap on Patreon uh, for Coffee with J Train, patreon.com slash Jared Freed if you want to get involved with that. Um, But I'm, I'm coming to the road. You know, I gotta I gotta get those new bits ready. I, I so I'm coming to San Diego New Year's the whole weekend, uh Jan or December 29th to the 31st. I'm gonna be in Houston, Dallas, Toronto, uh Vegas, Perrysburg, Ohio, Vancouver, Irvine, Indianapolis, just added to the calendar, Oklahoma City, Jaredfreed.com for tickies, Jaredfreed.com for tickies. Very excited. Today's guest, uh an OKP to the podcast, back. Original key player. Happy to have him. Hilarious comic. He's got a new special. It is on YouTube as you are listening to this episode. It is out right now. It's called Ooh La La. Hilarious comic. Phil Hanley, thank you for coming back to the J Train podcast. J Train, I'm stoked to be here. And I'd love to pose the listener to, to answer the question, whose parents, they look at both of us, whose parents live in Canada and whose parents <laughs> live in Florida? I feel like pretty, uh, pretty Right. Awesome. If you... If you're watching on YouTube right now, Phil looks like he's coming to us from a hostage situation where yeah. someone has taken him and is like, we need, you know, the only he's going to hold up a sign that says, please give money to my family to get me back or give money to these people. I'm in the comedy lab. This is where I write um, my jokes. So I'm, I'm looking behind you. There's a whiteboard. You yep. you put them on the whiteboard. Is that how you roll? What's the I, process? Let the us know. Process, Get, take us behind the the curtain of the artist. This is and and this is uh, and I'm dyslexic. I have a major learning disability. For some reason, what works for me, Grateful Dead on mm. pacing in uh, my giant East Village apartment. I don't know what mm-hmm. is it six thousand yep. square feet, and I uh, write on. Um, yeah, I think of a joke. I pace and write on the uh, on the whiteboard. And now, then, go ahead. Come over and be like, you know, the names of our jokes are so they're like, right? Penis fence, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, penis <laughs> fence. So, so I make funny. Right, um, penis yeah. fence is a winner. I, <laughs> I, I. Now, listen, everyone needs to go follow Phil on Instagram at Phil M Hanley. But most importantly, you know, people come on here because they want to sell their wares. They want you to go and and. And I, I've said this on many podcasts. We're give, you know, there is a special out there, and I've seen Phil on stage. He's hilarious. He's one of my favorites to watch, and I think you all will. I, I, I mean, you know, I know the audience. They're going to love it. It is waiting for you. No subscription needed. No, you know, remembering the password. It is literally in the bio of this episode of the podcast. You can click onto YouTube. It's called Ooh La La. It's already in a month, over 120,000 views. So it's killing it. And may uh, I say this? I, it cost me so much money. It went over budget and uh, <laughs> it's free. I just ask you to subscribe. That's the thing. And it's, it's like we... <sighs> Comedians, you know, a lot of comedians aren't confident enough, I think. I think we need to have more confidence. We need to know we are giving someone the gift of laughter, and it's not free. You pay up. Subscribe. Become a fan. If you laugh, enjoyed it, come back and enjoy again because Phil has the whiteboard behind him. He's writing out jokes every day. He's back in the lab. The lab. And what people don't realize is... It's so when you subscribe or you follow someone on Instagram, like a comic, then our agents, we get more money. If they're like, yeah, (laughs) Phil has uh, 200,000 followers on Instagram. I I could, I I, I was joking when I said I had a big apartment. You would be, you, if you saw my apartment, if I turned the computer this much, you would 
not follow your dreams. If you well, saw my apartment, I don't you'd be like, Jesus, I don't want to live in an apartment that size. If but, you're watching on YouTube, I don't think you have to turn the camera. Right now is enough camera, to make me stop <laughs> doing comedy. Yeah. No, you would. You know what I mean? You'd be like, well, maybe I don't want to be a potter or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You would take your parents' advice. You would have taken something practical at college. But Let's, uh, what I'm saying, if you subscribe to my YouTube or my Instagram or any comics, you're supporting the arts in a way because then we're finding like I think I have I'm just starting in YouTube. I have 11,000 followers. If when that gets up, then my agent could be like, he's got 100,000 followers on YouTube. Right. Pay him more money. It's it's a way. And that's the thing. When the, it, we are in a direct to consumer society, we have cut out the middle men, the middle woman, the middle person. Um, and we're bringing the funnies right to you. So, and, and listen, Phil's special is wonderful. It's so funny. It's 44 minutes of laughs. And let me just say, you know, to give people a taste of the Phil Hanley experience, your comedy, you go into the crowd. It feels a little bit tight wire act. You, it is a, a blend of material with this crowd work. It, it, how would you describe it to someone? I don't want to describe it for you, but I. But when you watch you on stage, you are prepared. You do have jokes, but you yeah. are you're you're kind of you're doing a dance with the audience that a lot of comics shy away from. Yeah, I like like my favorite. I love because you memorize your jokes and you got your jokes tight. I like to keep the jokes tight and the show loose. I, I want Great I, my favorite moments are um, yeah when you're in the audience you don't know what's going down and then bringing it back to material and uh, again a huge Grateful Dead fan they improvised for their whole career and I try to do that I have the jokes that I'm going to do but I try to keep it as loose as, as as I can and I attempted to do that during my special too or I did do that during the special it's it's a lesson for life come prepared play loose you know it is loose loose, i mean it is because there's sometimes i go on stage and i'm like i gotta get this thing done i gotta do the thing i've been writing all day i gotta do the thing that i've been working on and then i don't even make eye contact with the audience i don't even connect like honestly it's one of those things where you go just say hi to someone in the front row make a connection and it takes down so many of the barriers when you go like and i do this when i get coffee I, I I work on it. I actively, when I get coffee, I go, how are you to the barista? And yeah. that, because I'm like, let me receive it. Hit back the, you know, hit the ball back. Maybe they go, ah, I'm okay. You don't know. I don't know. This day has been shitty. And then you can respond to that. Like it opens, it, it is a good exercise, comedy or not comedy. Yeah, no, totally. And um, yeah, I like, I start a show. I definitely have a way that I want it to go. But I, I surrender to um, this is like on Saturday night. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Mm. There's predominantly the audience. The club maybe holds 300 people per hundred and like 80 people were from a corporation, like a business party. And they right, wanted because to it's about- Christmas time and yes. it's it's time for the holidays. So they're like, let's do a comedy show. It's all, honestly the. You're like, who's in charge here? Who thinks this is a good idea? Let's, uh, hey, let's finish out the year by seeing if we can laugh at uncomfortable things together. It's a, it's a, it's a weird thought. It is. And uh, it would have gone terribly, but I surrendered to the fact that it's them and we're going to work. We're going to find common ground. What I right. want to talk about, what you guys want to hear. Uh, and it turned out to be fun. It was well, dude. Yeah, on the uh, on the chaos uh, at times. Uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum, I just did Virginia Beach, and I was like, you know, I'm talking with the manager of the club, and she was like, "Yeah, we had a great weekend," and I'm like, "Thank you, I had a lot of fun too." And for my shows, when I see a group of women, I'm like, I assume that like they listen to the podcast, or like I kind of know the type. That, yeah. And so the the weekend kind of felt felt like a lot of fans and friends with their, which is the best, and. But then at the end of the weekend, the manager goes, "Ah!" and we had like 50 people from a from a holiday party. They loved it. And I was like, what? And she's like, oh, you I didn't tell you I there was like a whole company here. And I go, yeah, I wish you would have told. like I would have said like that would have been something I could have talked to them about. Like I yes. could have felt felt better. There was like one woman that was like in like like sparkly red shirt with like rain do- r- reindeer ears on. And I was like. 
She was definitely at the holiday party. That wasn't like, and I kept saying to her, I was like, I kept saying to her, I was like, you're dressed so festive, but it doesn't look like you're having fun. It's like, yeah, she's at her fucking company party. Yeah, like that's, comedy is not, and it's not a bad thing, and it doesn't mean you're a bad person or not a fun person. Comedy is not for everybody. <laughs> Each individual comedian is not for everybody. The same right. way that country music isn't for everybody and thrash metal isn't for everybody. And right. when you bring a company party to a show, and again, this weekend was fun, but you, I got lucky because some people, there was, they could have gone bowling. They could have just gone for dinner. And there's 150 <laughs> people. And some of them were like, yeah, that was my last choice was comedy. Now I'm forced to sit here. I got a babysitter. I paid for parking. Right. This is my only night to myself with my friends from work. And I'm being forced to sit here because I understand, like speaking of hostage situations, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, I, and it's always I the person it. who plant. The person who plans it always is like that person that's too into comedy. That's like, yeah. no, I'm d I'm dark, man. I get real <laughs> dark. And you're like, yeah, well, how about, you know, Judy at the front desk doesn't want to go to your dark place of your mind. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes they'll say that and they'll be like, and then you they'll be like, but by the way, uh, don't talk about sex and nothing. Right. About <laughs> yeah. like, oh, right. Okay. Fun show. Right. Well, listen, we're all pumped uh, that you're here. Everyone go follow Phil Hanley on Instagram at Phil M. Hanley on Instagram. Also the special. It's called Ooh La La. It's on Phil's YouTube page, which is you can follow the link in his bio to get there because it's sitting right there. But his 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 YouTube's Phil Hanley 2393. He's user number 1675 or something. So <laughs> go. <laughs> but if you go Phil Hanley, Ooh La La, then you, you're it'll you're, it's already it's crushing. It's already crushing. Hundred thousand views. A month in. Let's get to the emails. You ready? Let's do it. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Keep sending them in. We have some really good questions today. Friends reaction to me moving away. I'm a 28-year-old female, just took a new job, and will be moving from the Midwest, born and raised, to the Pacific Northwest. What a great move. I love the Pacific Northwest. There's something My about hotel. it. The Cove. Oh, you're Vancouver. from the Cove. Yeah. I'm coming. Where are you playing? Let's play uh, that. Show. Where am I going? Shelby. <laughs> Shelby. Shelby's here in the great beyond. Um, where am I? What's the theater in Vancouver? The Royal. The Vogue. The Vogue. The Vogue. That's where you're playing. And uh, no, Vancouver. It's with Just for Laughs, which, as people, you know, the Canadian listeners know, Just for Laughs, big deal in the area. Very prestigious. I'm, I am at the Rio. Oh, the Rio. That's great, man. Is that, is that a fun spot? Yeah, that's a fun spot. It's in a fun neighborhood, East Van, kind of our East Village. Um, Love it. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have a blast. Uh, yeah, the Coop, man. Sorry. I, love the, I, I just love the vibe of the Pacific Northwest. I, I, I don't know. It's the Goonies, man. It's like I recently decided to, to break the news to what I consider my best friend since middle school and wasn't met with much of a reaction. I even wrote out a card for her birthday to say first flight is on me. First flight visit to visit is on me, but didn't even end up giving it because I felt like she didn't care at all. I held off on telling anyone because I wanted to make the decision myself first. Is it weird to expect a reaction? She was the first of my friends I have told, and now I'm wondering if I even need to, like, announce the news to friends. Am I overthinking this? Also, is it weird to give a heads up to any friends with benefits out there? Thanks. So I, let's start with just the overall question. This person's moving from the Midwest. They're making a huge life change to the Pacific Northwest. Her friend didn't give her what she kind of anticipated. What do you think? Should there be a reaction? I think they're 100%. No matter what your friends tell you, when you connect with them and you care about them, you should match their energy. It should just be a reflex. So right. I think she, sh yes, the woman should have had, um, or the person should have had a reaction. And I also feel that I get that though, when you're anticipating a reaction and you're like, oh, I don't know what this person might just going to say how much they miss me all this stuff. And they're just like, nothing. Right. You think everyone's going to feel that way, but she, not everyone's going to have that reaction. Who knows what this other person, you know, there could be a little bit of envy. There could be who knows, or they could feel like, 
a bandit? Who knows? But well, it, 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 hard not to, to personalize it, but I would try not to. That's a good point. Is that everyone lives in the key of me? That's yes. how everyone writes. That's how everyone lives. They're the star of their own movie. They're the lead character. You, when you go to someone with big news, yeah, you are the lead role in the movie. But look at it from their angle. This is their movie as well. So I would understand that you said the word abandonment. I would understand this is your best friend since middle school. You're both in the Midwest. You're not in New York City. So I don't know where in the Midwest you are or what the, you know, what the situation is, but it could be seen as like, well, how is this going to change my life? Um, what you, it's just, I mean, I still think you should be happy for your friend, but 100% right. as a human, you just, you go there no matter what it is. Right. And I don't have that in me. Like there's no one, I guess the, the you know, at the age that you and I are at, and with what we do, which is a very much tennis, golf, it's a lone sport, we don't really, like, have our lives intermingled with someone else to really, like, be like, oh, shit, I'm losing, you know, the front tire on the car. If, yeah. you're, in, if you're in the Midwest, and, and listen, this isn't to besmirch the Midwest, but it is to say, if you're in an area that is close to where you were born and raised, that means people are kind of dependent on the community the the, the village so to absolutely. speak absolutely yeah and i can relate my best friend is my best friend pugs my best friend he's been my best friend in high school all the way through he's a bachelor and when mm. i like a true bachelor and i have okay. thought i want him to be happy but it's selfishly it's crossed my mind if he did get married it would change right. i can call him up and be like Dude, come to New York, man. Come this weekend. It's like Tuesday. And he can. Or I can phone him at any time of the day. Mm -hmm. And it's it enriches my life tremendously. Obviously, if he wanted to meet someone and be happy and have kids also, I would want that for him. But it has crossed my mind where I'm like, I am so lucky to have, you know, the person that I like hanging out with the most is like available. Accessible. Yeah. All and, the time. And and that we're giving an empathetic reaction to this friend who didn't give you enough. I will say they can, it is also possible they were being an asshole. You know, when, when you're totally. selfish, this is a selfish reaction. If someone gives me news, I don't care. If someone gives me a life update, I have learned. And I, I think it's been, I, I'm not lying to this person, but I have learned a great way to respond to someone is congratulations. Yes. Like if you if someone's like I'm leaving my job, congratulations. Because leaving a job, making a move, doing something new is just hard in general. So if if you're and I I think your friend this this friend that didn't give you a reaction, if they had just come with a congratulations and just amped it up a bit, maybe your expectations would have been met. But then I wonder what is the emailer's expectations, right? Like what would you ex – they don't even say what they expected. So that's kind of interesting. Well, I think they probably – I know, but you know when you think like – it would be like if you broke off with someone, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to tear their heart out. And you don't want to tear their heart out. But if you're like, I think we should see other people, and they're like, sounds right. good. You'd be like, what? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean? Whoa, you're losing me. <laughs> yeah. So I think – yeah, no, I agree, and 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 I think they're. I mean, they're. If it's especially their hometown, everyone, even if it's not for the best, people do fantasize about being, you know, leaving their hometown or whatever. So when I hear that, I think there might be some envy or some jealousy. But also, I find sometimes if someone came to you with this story, if this girl told you and you're her friend, mm -hmm. and then you ask, you're like, well, is it normal for your friend to be not overwhelmed by exciting news in your life? And then it dawns on them. Well, yeah, when I got married, they were pretty like that could just be a pattern that she hasn't realized that this right. person is very low key or maybe just very low key in general. You know, well, I, I agree with that. And I, I think, you know, you have to like here's I think this person writing in, you have to realize like not everyone's going to be like jump around. Like, listen, I remember telling people I was doing stand up and. When I first did stand up, they go, you have a number of reactions on the spectrum of things that make you feel good to things that make you feel shitty. And 
I remember like the ones that made me feel shitty were all like, why? What's why would you? And then the ones that made me feel good were like, congratulations, good job, whatever. You know, what made you? You know, we were a lot more positive. There's a tone to it. So I can understand yeah. that this person's like, hey, I'm moving. And they were and the, the person might have been like, well, why are you moving? What's going yeah. on? Like, yeah. you don't like it here. And it may, yeah. maybe they took it personally because moving is a referendum on their life decisions. So True. I, I, I think this person, I, and I agree with what you said in the beginning. Let's not judge our other friends by the reaction you got. But also understand this is a reaction that you could get that people go, well, what the fuck? You're leaving us? You don't want to be around? You want to go to the fucking Goonies? You want to be in Portland? What the fuck? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. You, you know, true. so what do you think about the friends with benefits? Do, do they warn the friend? If this person is worried about reactions from friends, you're going to be very disappointed from the friends with benefits that are like, oh, good luck. I don't know. Yeah. Call me if you want to fuck when you're back. Yeah. They're going to be like, Sarah, I'm going to miss you. Like, it's Jennifer. <laughs> J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Here with Phil Hanley at Phil M. Hanley on Instagram. Go follow the special Ooh La La. It's on YouTube right now. Boyfriend mood swing problem. Before we get to that, we are sponsored. Who doesn't love getting new undies for the holidays? Nobody, that's who. Me undies is your go to spot for snugly soft undies. I love me undies. I just got a new pair. Here's the thing. I know I'm dealing with this, and I know you are dealing with this. Phil, I know you, the general you, the audience is dealing with this. You have a pair of underwear that you're dealing with. You have a pair of underwear that you are, it's the back of the line underwear. It's everything else is in the wash, and you're like, I guess I'll wear these. Take that underwear, throw them in the garbage, and replace them with a new pair of MeUndies because they're super soft and they're going to be they're gonna they're front of the line undies getting put to the back of your line. From undies and bralettes to PJ sets, me undies has something for every name on your list. Also, the 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 sleeping pant joggers. I have to say, they are the most comfortable things I've put on my body. A- available wow. in sizes, unreal. It is a different sleep. Available in sizes extra small through 4XL. MeUndies has everything you need to make your favorite people smile this holiday season. All in one convenient place. This year, holiday your way with MeUndies. To get 20, 20, 20% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash JTrain. That's MeUndies.com slash JTrain. We love MeUndies. Here with Phil Hanley. Boyfriend mood swing problems. You ready? Dear Wizard of Haas, my boyfriend and I have been together for a little over six months. We met in trade school January 2022. And after hanging out in school and starting a relationship shortly after, he moved 14 hours away from home to be with yours truly. Things are great when they're good, but anytime he gets homesick, he gives me a whi- he gives me whiplash. Honestly, you'd think the guy was bipolar. One minute he's all about me and very vocal about how amazing I am, how lucky he is to have me, and so on. And then next, he's picking fights and bringing up my past, how quickly my rela- my past relationships ended and started, how I'm not fun, and it sucks here. Don't get me wrong. It does suck here in this little town, which is why we're moving to his hometown the next year. And the fact that I have no friend group is a huge negative. Tonight, we had a disagreement of sorts, and now he wants a break. When I asked him to define a break, he says a break from caring or putting effort in. He uninvited me on the trip. We had planned to go visit his family and go hunting back in his hometown. Bottom line is I'm exhausted emotionally from constantly having to remind him what we are working towards my feelings for him and fighting for our relationship. I love this man. He is fun and outgoing, a hard worker, a provider in the realm of hunting and fishing. He's great with my daughter, picks up after himself. The list of pros is long. What can I do to help make it through the next six months before we move if he decides he still wants to be with me after this break? Sincerely whipped and not in the bedroom. What do you think? Oh, man. Well, before I don't like this whole thing of fighting for relationships. I feel like that's right. great in a movie because it's 90 minutes. But if your right. life is fighting for a really, 
I, I just moody and you, you you're not fun. Like, OK, well, then go leave. Yes. Go hunt. Get out of here. You should yeah. be hunting for a new person. It's We're dumb. yeah. We're on the same page and it sucks because I feel for this person. Listen, I'm going to live in the land of of this is not dangerous, but like it could go another, you know, if someone's mood changes that quickly, I, I hope they're staying safe and I hope they're telling family and friends that this is kind of going on so that they don't feel alone. And maybe speaking to a professional, like getting together and doing like couples therapy might be an option. I'm with you. I'm out. The idea, the, here's the here's the worst part of their email. What can I do to make it through the next six months? It ain't changing. No. You, the, this isn't change of scenery shit. This is someone who's working on a relationship and another person who's not working with that person who's working on the relationship. Yeah. So the idea, the, the list of pros, the, the idea that you wrote, and I'm reading their words, he's fun, outgoing, hard worker, provider in the realm of hunting and fishing. You're not Swiss family fucking Robinson. He's not bringing home a fish for dinner, so that's yes. out. He's yes. great with my daughter. Fine. That's a big deal, and I think that I might agree. blind you to other things. And picks up after himself? If picks up after himself is in the the list before et cetera, yeah. I, I'm out. Like that's no. not you, The list isn't long because the list of pros is long. No, it isn't. No, it's not long. Cleans it's, up his room? What is he, your kid? Yeah. Provides food is not relevant in this century. And, no. <laughs> uh, the, the, being good with your child, I feel like that is a big deal. And I feel like if you're uh, uh, a mom, because that's so important. But right. But there's tons. There's, there's, there's a lot. And someone that loves you is going to automatically love your child. I've been in that situation. Right. Um where I had a girlfriend with a, with a little girl and it just made me love the mom more. And it made me love, I, it wouldn't be possible to have loved, the, you know, I adored the little girl. So, um, right. picked up your, after yourself is, is, is a benefit you're going to get dating someone above the age of fucking 13. Yeah. And, that's the benefit of dating a Roomba. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, <laughs> like what are we talking about? It, it just sounds like someone who's making excuses for someone that they know they shouldn't be with. Here's the thing. He moved 14 hours away, which I'm I'm sure like weighs on them. Like, oh, he moved here for me. Look, he's yeah. making an effort. But if if the fart smell moves to me, I move away from the like this is he seems yeah. like a like a drag. And if someone is gonna say you're not fun and complain and all that stuff, guess what? No matter where you live, there's gonna be grumbling. Wherever right. like you it does you yeah, this He's there with you, and you're with your little girl, and and it, it sounds like your apartment's tidy. He doesn't have like a lot to fucking. I I don't. But with saying that, I'm not I'm not belittling the person for trying to. to no, see I the get positive, it because we've all done that. I've been right. with people I've been with, and we broke up, and I thought I, it was the worst thing that ever happened, and I was devastated. Also, the if the person if I understand if you were unfaithful, if there was an issue that she had to work on. And he's like, I'm going to take a break. I could see like, okay, I'm going to right. stop doing this or, you know, to better myself. But if he's just like, if you're at your best and he's like, I need a break. Then you're like, have your break. Go to he the woods. Said, he said, I need a break from trying, putting in effort or caring. That's someone honestly. And like to give like the point of view, like this guy's point of view. I don't think I've, I, I, I don't I don't see a lot of myself in this guy that she's describing, but I do see myself as a younger, more immature person where I'm afraid to end something that I don't want to be in. And I say I need a break from actively participating in a relationship. That sounds like an immature person who just doesn't want to be in a relationship. And yeah. the minute it gets hard, they're like, oh, I got I need a break from trying what trying to like make a plan for dinner. Like, like what? Right. What, what it should, but that's another thing. I really feel that like there is. I think when you meet the right person, or when things, or that person at the right time, things. You, there's not a lot. I mean, there's effort, but you. It comes like second nature because you want to be with the person. You you want to move 14 hours because the benefit is that person's there. You right. Know what I mean, especially if it's temporary. 
Totally. I, I think she's got to reassess it. It's not about trying for the next six months and getting no. to the point where, oh, well, we moved and it's fixed. It's, hey, do I want to be with this person? I, I, I don't think, I mean, I think they need to change their perspective. Agreed. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Keep sending your emails. We're here with Phil Hanley. Ooh, la la. That's the special. How much is enough? Okay. This is a similar email, different question. Okay. I'm, I'm currently a single mom of a toddler, 29 female. My ex, 20, 28 male, and I have a great co-parenting relationship with one exception. He wants to get our family back together. Before we had our kid, we were together for over seven years with lots of toxicity, cheating, arguing, being generally nasty to each other. At the time our son was born, we were on the verge of breaking up, but tried to keep it wor- uh, make it work for our kid and because we knew being first-time parents would be hard on both of us, especially if we were single. We have been apart for about a year. In doing some self-care to get over the breakup, I learned how our attachment style really played a part in our relationship, i.e. avoid an anxious attachment cycle. Also in that time, he has gone from being petty about specific arguments in the relationship to now making a 180 degree change and is looking at the whole picture, saying he was afraid to commit. We are both in therapy separately, but have always been open to the option of going together. In the gamble of life, do you believe that distance makes the heart grow fonder? Will he just try to leave again when our kid will be more effect- our kid will be more affected? What do you think? Wow. Um, This is heavy. This is heavy, and you're asking two men who live in studio apartments with no kids. One has a whiteboard on the wall. (laughs) Mine, I've turned into a studio for my podcast. So, like, I, I, we have, we are fully aware this is not our lives that she is talking about. But I would also say, who better than? to give an opinion that two yeah. people that don't give a shit. Yes. And keep in mind the uh, whiteboard and the podcast studio apartment. <laughs> so, uh, well, the optimistic part of me, I do believe that um, people can change. And I do believe that you, especially that if, you know, he, she mentioned being unfaithful and stuff like that. You some I I there are I don't know people, if she said unfaithful, but she said it was just a toxic relationship. I thought she said there was like cheating. Um, cheating. Yeah, you're right. Cheating, arguing, being generally nasty to each other. Yeah. So I I think you can. I there, there are people that um, I have exes that mm. in I now when I've gone out and I've met a whole bunch of people since then I'm like, mm. dang, I really in retrospect could have had a really happy existence with that person. So I I've had that people, thought too. Yes, and people can change, and I feel like the the beauty of you know when someone when you break up with someone and then they go and they date a bunch of people and then you come back, you know, this party that's like, oh god, I wish they didn't date those people in between, maybe. But <laughs> you do learn what you like, and you do learn to appreciate those. You know what I mean? So I, I think I, I think people can change. I think so too. I mean, here's the the difference, though. Like, we're done figuring shit out when there's a kid involved. Yes. Like, like I I do think people can change. I don't think over the course of a year it is fully fixed. And no, I I think what's great about this email is that hey, you figured it out a little bit. Like, you went from toxic, petty co-parenting to someone who's an active participant and figuring this shit out. And yeah. I Go ahead. No, I'm so sorry, but I was just, just going to say, the fact that they're both in therapy is right. and open to going to couples therapy, I mean, it's, it's hard if you do, if you, she does care about this person and there was a bunch of shitty things in the past, but he's like, I'm in therapy and I'm willing to go to couples therapy. It's hard to be like, absolutely not out of the question. No point. I mean, I wouldn't jump back into things, but there, I couldn't see if you're going to therapy anyways, that there's anything wrong with 
going to a couple sessions and just seeing, I mean. Well, here's what I would say. I, I, I guess my difference of opinion is he's become a better co-parent. That doesn't mean he's a better relationship. Very true. So, so that's I, – and the, the co-parent thing, he is – Financially and and blood, he has to kind of work with you. If if you didn't have this kid, would he be doing this? And listen, honestly, sometimes you need something to like make you see the reality in front of your face. I do understand that. Like to to your point, Phil, like things can change. You can you can be shook up from such a way. Oh. Because of the parenting things, you could become more attracted to this person. But I would say to this person, it's not they've made a 180 degree change because you have needs. You're a, a woman out here, 29, young, young, beautiful, ready. Like you deserve a relationship too. This guy has to show you that he could be a good boyfriend and not just a good co parent. To me, that's that's kind of why I'm all on the side of like, hey, be good friends. Let's be cool together. Let's let's make this co-parenting thing the best co-parenting thing that's ever happened. Because the relationship thing is a whole different thing. That's not the same. Yeah. No. I I I I um I agree with that. And in a and and in a way, both of them. I know. I'm now. I'm kind of going against what I said, but both of them will. F it's just inevitable. They'll, they'll both find a partner that they're happy well, with that, eventually. That's the thing. This, 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 sorry to interrupt, but this operates under the idea that they are meant to be. Yeah. I am here to tell this woman there's another guy you're going to be just as better off with. You're going to be just as good with another guy, and you'll have this great co-parent. So, like, why not have both? Why not have the co-parent that you guys are done? There's no animosity we're cool you love him but you're not you know you're not right for him you even said about the uh, the avoidant anxious attachment style and then go find someone who's the right match for you like this ain't the only fish in the sea and it's i true. know and i think with the kid you're going wait this can all work it'll be easier you're already halfway to easy just because this is working out so it's like why not put a lid on this go hey man i like you as a person I don't like us as a couple. Let's be the best co-parents ever. Let's be each other's cheerleaders to meet new people and have that other thing that we both want. Like that's, to me, that is not just a, an easier road, but it's like one that's like more like exciting, fun, interesting. I don't know. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's, and yeah, I, I, I do see what you're saying. I'm so, I am like a, hopeless like romantic when it comes to like, right you know i think that's what but i think that's what she's doing that's the the hopeless romantic is this is the parent trap we're gonna get the parents back together they're gonna realize the error of their ways but it's like ah uh -uh, i don't think that's gonna happen here like the you you she literally said we are a bad match <laughs> yeah i i glazed over that as i have in my personal life that, <laughs> that's that's the I think J Train's given the best. I think that's. I don't know. It's just something to consider. I I'm not telling her what to do. I think like, if you get back together, great and good luck. But I think like, based on the email she wrote, it's like, hey, you're already, you're already a quarter of the way there. You got this guy who's being a good co-parent. Fucking and, amazing. And what else is uh, noteworthy, possibly? is if you do go through the effort with the therapy and all that stuff, and then it still doesn't work out, there could be hurt feelings and all that stuff, and that might affect the co-parenting situation. Right. The co-parenting goes backwards. That's exactly the whole – you're exactly right. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com here with Phil Hanley. The special, ooh la la. I'm looking at it right now. It's got a cool painting background. Phil's a big – Grateful Dead hippie, so it looks kind of Grateful Dead-ish. <laughs> it's perfect. So go watch it. It's on right now. How do I feel at peace with my hoe phase being over? My hoe phase will end the minute I am walking down the aisle. I, I The hoe phase thing is very female to me. 
Um, yeah. I, well, how, how, this is a, is this a female or a male writing? Female? I am 25 female. Feather, okay. feather. I love the pod. You up in Bachelor. Listen every week. You're the best. I feel like you'll have a helpful perspective to give me on this. I'm a 25 year old female and live with my boyfriend of almost four years. He's incredible. We have an extremely happy, healthy, loving relationship. We want to get married and have kids together. You get the point. My only issue with our relationship is this. Sometimes I struggle with my fear of commitment and settling down. Some background. I've always been a bit of a flirt. Had quite a hoe phase in college. It was super fun and I had a great time having casual sex and friends with benefit situations. My friends and I always joked that I was the Samantha type of the friend group. Sex in the City reference for anyone who doesn't know. I think Samantha has made it out. Of the sex, I think people know Samantha is the sex one. All right. Uh, while most of my friends are more long term relationship girls, I was raised by a single mom who hammered into me how important it is to be an independent woman. So I've always thought I would be single until my 30s. Fast forward to today. I'm the one in the friend group in a serious relationship. I feel very confident that I want to marry my boyfriend and have him be the future father of my kids. Now all my friends are the ones on the dating apps and sharing fun hookup stories while my boyfriend and I are staying in watching the Great British Bake Off show and going to bed early. My friends refer to us as mom and dad and talk about how excited they are for our future wedding. I've mentioned to my friends that sometimes I miss my fun college partying days when I was single and the thrill of experiencing a new guy even though I would never cheat on my boyfriend and have no desire to break up with him. But they basically shut me down and imply that I should be grateful because I have what every girl is looking for. Am I the problem for feeling too young to be settled down? We have the rest of our lives to act like an old married couple. I don't know what I need to do. I just need more adventure and excitement in our relationship. Or I don't know what I need to need. Do I need so she poses this as a question? Do I just need more adventure and excitement or relationship? Do I need to spice up our sex life? I just hate the fact that sex is bound to getting a little bound to get a little boring when you have it with the same person for years on end. If I happen to feel like I met my soulmate at 21, am I supposed to just let all the years of my 20s that I envision myself partying and being single before having to settle down and become a wife and a mother? I feel like there's probably plenty of guys that relate to how I feel, but I feel like I never hear girls talk about this. And even my boyfriend seems to be ready to get married, settle down. So it, make, it makes me feel like there's something wrong with me. How do I let go of the fun that I had a single uh, hoe in college and be content being in a healthy long-term relationship? Sincerely, a hoe at heart. What do you think, Phil Hanley? Well, I think that uh, two thoughts. One is the whole thing about some people enjoy meeting a new person and the adventure going home and you know what I mean? Mm. But that is a pot that is never filled because – there's never enough. It's like people who are right. ambitious to make money are never like, I got enough. You know what I mean? I got enough dough. You, right. I think you'll always have that. If, if she, especially because if she, it sounds like she had good experiences and fond memories, some people, right. male and female have a series of like mediocre or bad experiences or whatever. And then they're not as drawn to that. Uh, I've had lots of fun experiences and I do know that feeling, but at the end of the day, you're with someone even though you have those commitment fears, but you still can look in the mirror and be like, I love this guy. I'm happy with this guy. But just because you have a boyfriend, for one, you can still have fun nights out with your girls and not go home with someone. For two, right. if you love this guy and you love his um, personality and spending time with him, there's other things you can do. For one, be conscious of the sex thing. But for two, mm -hmm. travel together. Do these things that only couples can do Go, go to Europe, go to, you know what I mean? There's more to just getting bombed wherever you live and like going home with dudes. Right. I, I totally agree with you. It doesn't sound like she's upset in this relationship. She, it sounds like no. she's having a very normal thought. Like, wow, one dick the rest of my life. That's what she's yeah. thinking. Yeah. But here's the thing with one dick the rest of my life. Dress up the penis. Let's get a little honest and open and adventurous. I think being adventurous with a partner is way more fun and interesting and different than it is with one night stands. One night stands. It's just a new person. It's the same yeah. experience. It's the same. Yes. Well, you know, oh, this went pretty well. It's not two people who know each other's bodies, know each other's 
fears and thoughts and what they're into and what they're looking for. Those are the nooks and crannies of a sexual relationship that get you into newer spaces. I would encourage this person. I think their problem is more the communication of how they communicate with their partner. Like, I think, like, the idea that, like, and I've said this before, like, I've given strategies on this podcast many times where it's like, hey, let's write each other. Let's pick a night, uh, one night a month where you plan it and he plans it. Let's get weird. Let's get nonjudgmental. Let's tear away what the things that you might think of each other for the things that you want to, like, get adventurous with. I think that's more of their issue. They think that relationship means we have sex the same way we've always had sex. Yeah. And she thinks ho phase means all this other crazy shit. I would say to her, it's the opposite. If you're open and honest with your partner, you can have this like fun, different thing that also includes the great, the great British bake off. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, I agree with that 100%. And I also agree with like, having have that conversation i don't know if i would say to my boyfriend like i miss hooking up with dudes but you could say let's be conscious we're together we're young we're fun people let's be conscious moving forward that we're gonna like think of what's a fantasy like let's let yeah let's get buck wild let's think of things right and do those things let's be con yeah i'm not i'm not fearing i i that's i think that's a great point it's not Oh my God, I want to fuck all these dudes. It's, oh my God, we're 25. I can't be 30 right now. I need to be 25 with you. I'm willing to be 25 with you. I want to go out and get a little too drunk together. I want to go out, get dressed up in a costume, and you know, and you go into a costume and we meet up late at night. I want a you up text from you. Like, yeah. I think that's I think that's what she's craving. And I think what you do is the like the friends calling you mom and dad tells me everything. I fucking hate that. I think that's stupid. I think that's annoying. I think that's your and your friends being like, you're so lucky. No, you're lucky for some things. They're lucky for some things. Their life yeah. is fun. Your life is fun. It's time to readjust and tell your partner, hey, let's be 25 together. I want my great British bake off nights, but I also want the nights where I'm being a little wrong and I'm fucking in a toilet somewhere yeah. out on the town. What about and also it's like, well, what what's the exciting part about hooking up? Maybe your friend, your boyfriend goes out with his friends, you go out with your friends, and then you fucking to add the naughty factor. You both Irish exit, meet at another bar, and right. do whatever, or I would come back to his place or go back to your place or whatever. And maybe the naughty part is that you're bailing on your friends or whatever. Think about it. There are probably aspects of what she likes about hooking up that you could do with your boyfriend and it'll be a right. million times better. The difference between relationships and not and single is laziness. When you're single, you can lazily go out and find someone new. When you're in a relationship, you have to say to them, Hey, let's get on the same page. We're going to do something tonight. We're going to do, we're going to actively be hosed together. Yeah. J train podcast at gmail.com J train podcast at gmail.com. We are sponsored. This episode is sponsored by better help. If life came with a user manual, things would be easy for everyone, but it doesn't. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating a career change, a new relationship or becoming a parent can make you feel uncertain. Therapists are trained to help you learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing you'll get to a user manual for you. I love BetterHelp because it is the toe into the water that people need to get involved with professional therapy. I am someone who gets down on myself that I'll go, oh, I need a doctor, and then I'll Google doctor, and I'll go, what the fuck are you doing, and I'll give up on it. I love BetterHelp because it's an easier option to get in the therapy game that didn't exist before. You don't have to leave the house. You can even have the camera off. It's great. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and chat therapy sessions. You can choose to not see anyone on camera. As the world's largest therapy service, 
BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash JTrain. That's BetterHelp.com slash JTrain. BetterHelp.com slash J train here with Phil Hanley family wedding at Phil M Hanley the special ooh la la J train I have written to you in the past and you have given some great advice here I am looking for help on another matter I'm dealing with currently okay I've been invited to my cousin's wedding and I'm a little lost for gift ideas and expectations. A little background. This is a destination wedding in the Caribbean. And the cost for the flight and hotel plus a dog sitter totaled $2,700 for both my significant other and myself. This is a cousin I'm not super close with. Haven't even met the bride-to-be. But my dad really wanted my sisters and I to make an effort to go as his side of the family rarely is together due to being based all over the United States. My question is this, how much should I give for the wedding gift? My cousin slash dad is very, my cousin and his dad are very wealthy. I don't uh, want to be insulting with my gift, but at the same time, this is an expensive wedding to attend. They don't have a registry, so it would just be cash and check or a check. Any advice is appreciated. Phil Hanley, what do you think? Wow, that's, uh, that, (laughs) When going back to, I don't know if it's like a, an insecurity thing or whatever with me, when she was, when your friend was talking about, or back email about going away, I myself would make downplay leaving when I left Vancouver. I saw a big deal or whatever. Cause I'm always worried people aren't going to show. I would never have the balls to be like, <laughs> fly to the Caribbean. Right. Watch me and <laughs> my girlfriend of 10 years. You get married. So oh, I, also, also the balls of her dad to be like, yeah, I really want you to come. Okay. Well, how about you help me with the cost then, of dad. this trip? Yeah. I like, <laughs> God damn. Like I feel first off, if I had a destination wedding and people mm-hmm. came, I would be, I would feel guilty if they got me a gift. Right. Right, your gift right. is the fact that you took time off work. Are you serious? Yeah. And your boyfriend took time. He doesn't even know. You're not close to these cousins. He's not even, he wouldn't recognize them at a, at a I, restaurant. Your presence is your present. I, your, yes, I, I'm embarrassed to admit. I constantly forget to give wedding gifts. Like I, I consistently like I, I go and I go, Oh, I'll give it after I'll send yeah, you it in a year. I, you have a year. I've used that year to its max because I forget. And then I'm like, oh, I'll send it. I'll send it. It's not even like not wanting to give a gift or cheap. It's just I forget. I and know. I'm like, and then I go, and then there's a piece of me that goes, why are we giving fucking gifts? If we're all going to have weddings and or not. Yeah. Like what at this point, giving my friend a hundred bucks just feels fucking weird. Like, I, I don't know. It feels weird. So I don't know. I'm with you on the embarrassment scale, but also it's not about them. It's about the person writing in. I want the person writing in because the worst feeling in the world is like being there without like not comfortable there. But here's what I would say. The year thing that you brought up is a big point. Go to the wedding. Don't give a gift. Feel it out first. They, you might get there and everyone might be like, oh, we're not doing gifts. They might look at you and go, and because you do have the option to send it afterwards. Yes. I would wait until I went to this wedding, had a good time. Uh, you know what? I should give a gift. You might afterwards feel better about the gift because the money's been spent at that point. And it's not yeah. like, I think you'll feel better. I think this person, I don't know how much to give. I think maybe if you're bringing a guest I guess 250, 300 makes some sense, I guess. But I'm like, even that, I'm like, what are you, what is this going to do for them? Yeah, like, what are you does- gonna, but, yes, I don't understand. I, but I think that's great advice because also sometimes, and I've, I've done this a million times where I'm like, I got to go to this thing. And right. then you get there and the people are generally moved and really touched that you made the effort. And then, and maybe you're, you're chatting with them and you think of the perfect thing or right. whatever. Or, they might say, you might hear a speech during it where you're like, that's what I'll get them. I, yeah. and, and you might have like an idea for something that's not 
cash. You know, yeah. maybe it becomes this like more special thing. Yes, or it's like a little, it's a token of something that occurred at the wedding. It's fun, whatever. Right. I, I and, think, sorry to interrupt, but also no. they haven't met the new the, the bride-to-be. Once yes. you meet them, now you'll feel a better connection. You'll feel better about whatever this gift is. Yeah, absolutely. Or maybe you'll come back and you'll be like, it's not even, you don't need to give a gift. It doesn't right. you you'll be feel like, bad. You're like, you'll go, fuck those people. Or... You'll say to your dad, who's like, oh, will you please? Our side of the family never gets together. Okay, you're in charge of the gift, Papa Bear. Yeah, I fucking shell out 2700 Right. Yes, let's, <laughs> let's unite as a family and you pay for the gift. Right, right. that's together. a good idea. Pool the yeah. gift. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Here with Phil Hanley. Let's do one more. You ready, Phil? Let's do it. I sent this one to you over email. Do you have it? Uh, I have it. I'm such a bad reader. I'm, I'm dyslexic. Well, I'm going to read it, but I want to okay. make sure you have the, the, the screenshots in front of you. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Let me look. Wait, can I do this while I'm on? Wait, should I look at it on my phone? You can look at it on your phone. Go ahead. Yeah, let's do that. We'll have okay. it up on the screen if we put okay. it on, on. Okay. Would you rather, Jared? I'm not your typical demographic. I'm 40 and I'm divorced and I don't hate the apps. Well, I'm 37. We would have gone to high school together. I think you're in the demo. Since my new life began, I've only had positive experiences on the app. Thanks to you and the queens at GGE and Jordana and you up. Well, thank you. You have changed my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. Here it goes. I recently ended my first serious relationship since my divorce. I'm nervous and scared. But wow, things have changed on Hinge. Voice prompts, polls, etc. Here's my question. What's your opinion on the would you rather type of poll on Hinge? Some of them seem cute. Others feel entirely pretentious. Examples below. So example one, pick our first getaway. Croatia, Sweden, Costa Rica. Okay, that seems pretty fine. Example two, would you rather hike the Appalachian Trail, spend the weekend shopping in New York City, Outfit a van, travel the U.S. hiking, and trying to work out and shower at PF. What's PF? Planet Fitness, I believe. Planet Fitness. Even though I, I want the left. listeners to know I go to Equinox. Okay, good. <laughs> Just so people know. I swipe left on both. The first one because he lived too far away. The second because it seemed to be an obvious asshole screening his applicants. Oh, my God. Am I right? What are your thoughts? Thanks for the work you do. Wishing you all the feathers. So what do you think about these two would-you-rathers? I do agree with what the person's saying. The yes. person, the emailer is saying, when you have a question that says, would you rather hike the Appalachian Trail, spend the weekend shopping in New York City, outfit a van, travel the U.S. hiking, you're saying, are you Crunchy Granola or are you Samantha from Sex in the City? I oh. want to, and, and, and I honestly, there's a classier way to do that than this, but this yeah. person has outsourced the problem solving part of their brain to the app and that's a turn off to me it this this it seems judgy or something like also right. the croatia sweden costa rica i'm like they're not nor they're not like your average getaway where you're like right yeah do you want to go to you know it's like what am i supposed to be aware of the like political climate in croatia before i make <laughs> right. that, you know what i mean like it's like and it all break. It also feels like they're testing you. They're going, yes. if you said, I'm a shopper who likes to go to New York City, oh, you're one of oh, those. And then yeah. you go, yeah, that's who I am. I, I thought you were attractive. That's why I'm even fucking answering these things. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, it's like, oh, oh, oh you're one of those. Also, it's like, yeah, maybe I want to go shopping in New York, but also, yeah, I wouldn't mind going on a hike once in a while. Also, right. this outfit of van and travel through the U.S., this is an adult that spends too much time on TikTok because that's what they always right. do. They live in their Hyundai and mm -hmm. they shower at Planet Fitness. Here's the the annoying part of this is is really there's a way to be vulnerable and this is taking the vulnerability and putting it on the answer. So if they said, hey, all I want to do, my goal in life is to outfit a van to be able to travel the country and go hiking, that's vulnerable. They're being honest about themselves. Yeah. Instead... They're on the receiving end. They're like, you tell me. Oh, you think I'm hot? Well, if you want to get in this door, you better yeah. answer right to my six questions. And you're like, get out of here, Wizard of Oz. I don't want to fucking yes. take your test. It feels very like, and because the answers are so varied, 
it feels like the it's gonna you're you're setting yourself up for failure. Right. You know what I mean? It, it, it is it is you have answered right or you are a pretentious snob who should be getting out of here because I don't date types like you. No, it's yeah. all fucked. Yeah. J Train Podcast at Gmail.com, J Train Podcast at Gmail.com. Phil Hanley, thank you for coming on. Fantastic. I have J Train, I have so much fun whenever we get to do this. I'm uh, the best. grateful to do it again. Everyone go watch Phil's special. It's ooh la la. It's on YouTube at Phil M. Hanley. The, the link is in the bio of this episode. It, it will be all over my social media today. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Monday with your emails, your stories, your questions. Keep sending them in. JTrainPodcast.com. We'll be back next week. Boom.